Global growth is set to be weak this year, shrinking 4.4 percent with a bumpy, uneven recovery next year. That's all according to the IMF this week. I spoke exclusively with World Bank President David Malpass, whose focus is on poverty and more on developing nations, for his take on the global recovery. And it was a wake-up call. Listen. There are recoveries in, underway in some of the advanced economies, so the, the, the recessions are less deep than had been for, feared. But for the developing countries, I'm afraid uh, outside China, apart from China, many of the developing countries are worse than had been earlier expected. Uh, and so it's this unequal process of recovery going on. What about U.S. stimulus? There's a huge debate right now over whether to do more, how much to do. What would it do for the global economy if the U.S. injected more fiscal stimulus? This is an unprecedented crisis, and the amount of stimulus already being being uh, inserted into the global economy, I think, is also unprecedented. It's not just the U.S., but it's Europe, it's Japan, uh, uh, and uh, those. That what that means is that there's more demand. Uh, they, you, you know, people spend some of that money, but for the developing countries, not much of it uh, really reaches them. So my real focus is on. The poorer countries, they don't have the capacity to do this kind of fiscal stimulus, and their central banks can't be buying assets the way the the uh, the the U.S. the central banks in the advanced economies are doing. So it it poses a real problem because the 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 economies are are slow, and there's not much uh, sign of a recovery yet. What are we looking at in terms of your fears about the developing world? Defaults. Yeah, there, there, there are one problem is the debt overhang. Um, that does that's not going to challenge the global system the way it has in previous crises because many of these uh, debts, uh, the, the, these uh, uh, amounts owed are to the bond market, euro bonds, for example, uh, and also to China. Uh, and so these are these are uh, uh, not going to really undermine the international system. But what it does do is causes the poorest countries to have to keep making payments. That's that's what we've been focused on, to try to have a suspension of the payments and then a longer-term solution mm -hmm. uh, for these countries. At the same time, there's still so much uncertainty. We learned that Europe has now overtaken the U.S. in terms of new positive COVID-19 cases. Second wave concerns as it gets colder outside. What would that do to this nascent recovery? Uh, for the advanced economies, we'll have to see how they handle it. You know, one of the challenges is with the schools closed and people uh, aren't able to go to work because they're taking care of their, their their kids and the learning goes backwards. That's a particular problem in the developing world. We, we think there are a billion, one billion children out of school in the developing world waiting really for the recovery to take hold. So if there's the second wave, that's a concern. But I'm mostly focused on this first wave. The number of people in extreme poverty looks like it's going to go up by 150 million people uh, in 2021, which is a giant uh, backward or worsening of the poverty conditions in the world uh, because of the pandemic and the shutdowns. I don't think we've seen that kind of step backwards since, what, 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. What? What are the solutions? The solutions, I think, are to uh, uh, find some kinds of treatment of the, vex of the virus itself. We, just yesterday, my board passed a, uh, a package of up to $12 billion for, to help the, the poorer countries purchase uh, vaccines and therapeutics and distribution systems once those are available and developed. We'll want to move quickly if there is a, a medical improvement that's available. So that's one part of it. And then the other part, I think, is trying to keep core businesses open and running and available. That means electricity. That means water systems uh, and food, food and food distribution systems all going uh, during the crisis. So we're quite focused on that. And we have a lot of mm. positive cash flow uh, going into the poorest countries to help with that. You mentioned the 12 billion that, that you're going to help get vaccines and treatments to the poorer countries. The U.S. has already spent at least $10 billion on Operation Warp Speed. Are you concerned that 
the U.S. is going to be prioritized. They've already got deals with all of the major manufacturers of vaccines and treatments. But we're, we're also working with manufacturers. IFC has a $4 billion platform that will help manufacturers who want to distribute distribute into the poorer countries. So I think there'll be a, a big movement by the manufacturers to, to have a fair, uh, equitable distribution around the world. So I'm not so worried about people buying up the doses. We have money available that, uh, that countries can choose uh, how to buy, uh, wh what services they need, what vaccines they need, when those are available. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.